Hello all, welcome back to another video and welcome to Sammy G's World of Cinema. Today on the channel I am going to be reviewing the latest psychological horror movie uh, Long Legs from 2024 and it is directed by Osgood Perkins who, God what has that guy done again? Because I know he's um, the son of Anthony Perkins. I think it was the Black Coat's daughter which I haven't checked out which is meant to be another like psychological horror and it is starring Nicolas Cage, Maker Monroe, Blair Underwood, Alicia Witt. So a bit about the plot guys, a serial killer is on a murderous like killing spree like just um, known like in the past like couple decades I'd say from like the 70s to like say the early 90s and um, gone around and killed like a few families one by one and he has actually never been seen in the flesh and then meanwhile like go forward like 20 years later an FBI agent um what's her name Lee Hackett I think it is um played brilliantly by um Maker Monroe um sorry guys if I am miscorrecting them um, like a, a pronouncing pr pronouncing that word i do apologize about that if i'm if i'm mispronouncing it and she is left with like a vital um cunning task to try track down like sort of um you know like these sort of like messages i think in like a morse code um you know like the, these that these different codes that um and to crack them um, where they would translate into like that these different like messages and um yeah, it's like her and one of her uh, like colleagues that tr that go on like this investigation just around like any like that sort of like um a couple of, like the few of these houses um uh, like a couple of these families um where um like a, a relative of someone uh, has been murdered by this um anonymous like killer and um whilst this is all going on uh, it so happens like all these murders that have took place has happened six days before the 14th of january or after the 14th of january as well the fbi agent lee um she um kind of um rekindles her past she has like um sort of like some rash memories that kind of like come back flooding in her memory and um she kind of goes to her mother to find out like um sort of rediscover like um that um past um and she goes to her mother um to um see if there's anything that um she can remember also um like during this uh, past which um has some real um drastic um measures it's a film that you're gonna either love or you're gonna love and i think for me i didn't absolutely love this film i didn't walk away thinking wow best film of the year wow i've got to see this film again it's a film i more like appreciated you know like as as a film and i thought it was a really good film but it's one of those films that just doesn't scream rewatchability and there was still a lot to admire though um, i'm gonna leave a link to um who is it um jordan's review of this because jordan did a cracking review of this film i'll leave a link to that in the description box down below um i think also um who is it um oh, i'm trying to think who else um Leon at uh, Leon Talks Films was a big fan of this film as well. And this film it it was unique, I think, with like its style. I really liked the um sort of the ratio style and the camera framework, like you know, so, to sort of like um showcase some of like the imagery that you know is really effective and has um you know like a um it, it's it's kind of of um. It, it, it really just showcases like the horror and the um you know the the, the shock value and the, the tension that's um arose here that's interlinked with like these this murderous spree um what this um anonymous killer has been um like um 
like uh, committing like this this se series of acts sort of the wintry scenery of this film i felt it really oozed through the vibrancy and the real dark atmosphere that that was centered around this film and yeah i think it was it was like um i really when there's a horror film that set the wintry period, I think chilling, with no pun intended, is the way to describe it. And this really had a chilling presence. It really oozed through the atmosphere. It was very... And also, the sound design, guys, was fantastic in this film. I think the sound design was bloody brilliant. It really just, you know, like, um, put this character or this character through the ringer you really do want um this character to get out of this um, drastic scenario and this real um sort of unsettling place that they're in it was you know i think the sound de design i can totally give props to that and um like when you see this, this was in the trailer, so this is not really a spoiler, but where you see like the loud banging on the door and, you know, and then like, um, I think it's, um, yeah, the, the, like one of the, the key characters goes out of the house and, and then see, sees around the house and, and the, the, like there's no one there. It's, it's, it's just all, um, it's, it's quiet for, uh, after, for a split second. And it, you know, I felt the tension building in this film really played a big part into this. Um, I thought the actress, Maker Monroe, was fantastic in this uh, lead role, guys. She really gave it her all. And I thought her character had a, a, a unique um, gift of, you know, like finding these new clues and um, discovering like this new evidence as well. And um, yeah, I feel, think she did a fantastic performance uh, as in the lead role. She was a lovely um, character as well. She was really caring and, um, you know, she was really determined to find out more of her past as well. And, um, you know, like this, this past that, um, where all this imagery and, and like memories are flooding, uh, are flooding back. A sub story like involving her past was really interesting, but at the same time, she's um, on this case, this uh, investigation of like these these murderous acts that have, have happened. Um, you know, like at, at present, like during this film, and um, yeah, I think she uh, was absolutely fantastic fantastic in that that lead role and her character being on the autism spectrum and i'm autistic myself as well guys and some of the things and some of the aspects that was in this film i thought was um re like um i could sort of like um, relate to like her character with um some of the um things that she was picking up on and i thought the guy who played the main um detect was it the detective blair underwood um who played that main detective i thought he was really good in this i think he was definitely one of the standout characters i thought um nick cage um you know like gave one of his best performances here as, as long legs this anonymous serial killer in the film and um yeah i thought the makeup and stuff was really um well done in this film i thought um yeah, like the way he would come in and out of the film, wherever, wherever it is, some of the flashbacks or, you know, like at, at, like at present in the film, I felt, you know, he made, he, he played a real unhinged um, like part into the film. And, you know, like he had a very unsettling um, approach to his character. And yeah, Nick Cage, I'm not a huge Nick Cage fan, admittedly, guys, but I can admit he gave one of his best performances here. He was really good. And um, I thought, yeah, some of, like I say, the car camera work and um, the, um, you know, like um, the way the film would be, say, like, you know, it was it was be long, um, like panned out through some of the, like, the shots and, you know, like, and then the, the way the film would just um, go to like this, this ratio and then it would, it would take you back, it would, it would show through that imagery, you know, I think that was choreographed and crafted like really well, um, the story was really interesting, I don't, I haven't seen a lot of psychological horror movies, but I think this was a, a really good, um, 
you know, like a mesmerising, um, like, um, film to watch. I'm still yet to see Silence of the Lambs, but I think this film has been compared heavily to that. And, um, yeah, I think as well, the, as I say, um, the ending, I must admit, the ending I wasn't a huge fan of. I felt it was a little bit... You know, I think there was a couple of things that maybe need to be fleshed out to properly wrap up the film. However, I thought it was um, it was very good. It was very solid on the whole. It's a film I don't think is going to require much rewatchability, but there was a lot to be admired here. You know, from like the say the camera work, and also T Rex. A few of his songs, um, like um, you know, featured in this, and I've got I've got the T Rex. Electric Warrior t-shirt on today and um, yeah this was um this was a really um interesting like watch I think I haven't seen many too many uh, films like this before and um, I think um psychological um horror I think it, it plays a, a part a big part into like fear and paranoia and you're really wondering where and what what's happening here where is this gonna go and yeah it, like the the direction I thought was really like good really solid in this film I think as well the other thing was the religious part of the film um I I, I think as well it, it was um it played a big part into like him um, like in the last probably 15, 20 minutes of the film did the religious part of the film. A couple of um, mentions of the devil in this film as well and, and Satan, which um, I think was mentioned. I thought the runtime of one hour and 35 minutes was just perfect for this film. I think it had this film gone on for like up to two hours, I think it would have fizzled out and maybe um, been watered down in quality, but thankfully not the case in this. And um, yeah, as I say, my first film I've seen from Osgood Perkins, and I can tell he took a bit of inspiration from Psycho and possibly Silence of the Lambs, but I haven't seen that film as of yet. Also, this film really gave me seven vibes as well and and possibly 2022's the batman as well in terms of like solving that these clues and and looking for this new evidence that's been um left door to door yeah as i say that was um that did remind me a little bit of sort of like that aspect in um like 2022's the batman as well so overall i thought it was a very good um psychological horror film and it's definitely um one of probably my favourite films of the year. I would watch it again. Not in a major hurry to revisit this film. But I thought it was very good <clears throat> for what it was. And, um, you know, like, I think it did something, like, you know, you, in a unique way that I haven't seen in, in many horror films before. I would give this film a 7.5 out of 10. I thought Long Legs was very good. Not going to be... For everyone, it isn't an acquired taste. I think it like is a bit of a marmite horror film, but I think it was it was something I I haven't seen every day that sort of thing. And yeah, I thought it was a a, a very interesting watch for sure. So guys, have you seen Long Legs? Do let me know in the comments down below. And um, what's your thoughts on Osgood Perkins? And what's your thoughts on this director? And any of the actors? And if have you seen Silence of the Lambs? And if you've seen that or and this, does it compare and take influence from that film? I'd love to know all of that good stuff in the comments down below. So thanks for watching. Cheers for stopping by. And until next time, I'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye.